The state of Colorado has an energy plan that is, uh, they're shooting to eliminate the last coal plants and build a $6 billion, no, a $3 billion, 600 mile uh, uh, ener uh, electric transmission line around the state in order to pick up power from um, windmills that they're planning on private companies building for them based on the energy tax credits that go with windmills. <laughs> they're the eternal optimists. And, um, but they're assuming that someone will build these uh, windmills. Um, and um, so that means you can have a, bit, a, bit, a lot of water, um, energy transmission and you'll have all these intermittent windmills, which means you'll have a, a lot of fluctuations. So I was thinking, uh, why don't you, if you could take a uh, space underneath this power line and build a high temperature uh, thermal storage system, uh, you could store the energy during the times of the day when there was more than enough of it and maybe buy the energy from the Excel at three or four cents a kilowatt hour. And then during peak periods when they need the energy, you could reverse the process and sell the energy back to them for maybe uh, 25 cents a kilowatt hour during their peak times. And so uh, we were thinking, uh, I was thinking, well, what would be a good salt to use to do this? And um, it's so old fashioned uh, sodium chloride. Um, you know, Ed Feel, I don't think he's here uh, to this time, but he had this idea of using a sodium chloride uh, uh, th uh, fast breeder reactor operating at about 800 degrees centigrade um, and it has a nice high specific heat uh, fusion. And so I thought, well, why couldn't we build, could we do this is, with sodium chloride? And there's an advantage to doing this where you, you're operating around the melting point because you're never going to, uh, you're, you're just gonna, you're gonna use that latent heat of fusion so your temperature is gonna stay very, very constant right at about the 800 degree point. So you avoid the big uh, thermal expansion and contraction uh, problem. So I thought, well, but 800 degrees is pretty darn hot. Where is this down there? Oh, here we go. Okay, so uh, there are advantages. Uh, sodium chloride has a very high melting point, uh, very high latent heat of fusion. It's non-toxic, it's inexpensive, readily available. You can store a lot of energy in a small volume. Uh, there are problems with it though, because uh, you have high melting point means dealing with materials at extreme uh, temperatures. You have uh, obviously corrosion problems, unknown effects over time. How long can materials take this kind of heat? And uh, but and the idea would be this: we'd use a, a build a, a a vessel that holds uh, sodium chloride about 800 degrees uh, centigrade. Uh, then you would have a lower melting point salt uh, for your heat exchange, something that would uh, melt at around 300 degrees uh, centigrade. You have a heating system which is electric. You have it heated with electricity, and. Um, and so we start off with, with the system that's capable of storing four uh, megawatt hours uh, of energy. Uh, and that would require, in order to do that, you need about 60,000 kilograms or 30 cubic meters of sodium chloride. You'd need basically one pump. I don't even know if you'd need a valve, but you probably wouldn't hurt to have a valve. But when the system is, when you turn that pump off, you're not making any steam. The whole system is just melting. You're just spending that time melting the salt at about 800 degrees centigrade. When, the, when you need the energy, you turn off the electric heater, you turn on the pump, you start making steam, and you run it out to a, a steam plant. It sounds like a good idea. You know, we went through the calculations to figure out how much, uh, uh, how much energy you would need in order, how many joules of energy you would need to store, and assuming a 50% uh, efficiency factor, you need uh, this, uh, um, that you would need that eight, uh, in order to get the eight megawatt hours, you'd need that 30 cubic meters of salt. That's all that came to. And uh, so uh, if you have a three, uh, three meter diameter tank with a depth of four meters, it's about, so that's a manageable size. And then you can, uh, it's enough to hold the, the salt you would need to do it. And so the question is, uh, could we do this with a simple, with an inexpensive, uh, simple material rather than Inconel or uh, Hastelloy or these other exotic? Could we just do it with cast iron? 
So I thought, well, let's try that. And so uh, uh, cast iron uh, has a uh, the big, it has a melting point, 2,700 degrees uh, centigrade. Uh, and the important thing, it has a yield strength of 7,250 PSI. So because what you don't want to do is you don't want your, your vessel to deform on you. And so if you keep the, the, the stresses below that yield point, uh, um, you can heat it up. It, it, it will not act like butter, right? That's a bad thing. But we all know that as you heat material up, it affects uh, the yield strength goes down. Here's a graph that this is for steel, but it's it's uh, this gives you the idea that when you go from uh, 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 this thing goes up to 600 degrees centigrade, and you're at about 55 percent of the room temperature yield strength. So if I extrapolate that, uh, if you go, we want to get to 800 degrees. We figure we would be at about 20 uh, percent of the room temperature yield strength. So we're working with 1,450 PSI as our maximum uh, stress that we're going to allow. So I just wanted to know, OK, if we do that, if we built this 3 by 4 uh, meter diameter tank, filled it up with 800 degree salt, what would the stresses on that on the vessel be? So it's not a very complicated problem. There are two stresses on the vessel. One is the one that runs up and down the side wall. I guess we call that the axial stress. And then the other one is from the pressure of the salt inside the vessel pushing out. And we call that the radial stress? Hoop stress. OK. Either one. So, uh, and so think going through the calculations, it was actually the, the uh, tangential stress is not very, it's not very great because you have a whole column of, of, of material just holding itself up. And so using the weight, uh, using a square figure, uh, a one inch thick steel wall could make the calculations easier. And then so a nine, nine meters of steel would give you it's about 100 PSI of compression stress at the bottom of that tank, which is trivial. But funny, the salt inside the tank is actually a bigger stress because uh, salt's uh, 2.6, specific gravity by about 2.6, and there's uh, 12 feet of it. And so uh, when you get down, and it's all being supported by those, the two uh, sides of the tank. And so you got up this pressure, this lateral pressure against the side of the tank being supported by these, just the two with the walls. So that actually got up to about 726 PSI, which kind of surprised me. It's about 50% of the of our, our supposed yield strength. So maybe we make the bottom of the wall, bottom of the tank, two and a half inches or two inches. But it's, it's certainly doable. So of course, we had to try this. So I, I got a very high tech uh, um, uh, cast iron melting pot from the Lodge company that makes cast iron uh, cookware. <laughs> and we, and a friend of mine has a uh, electric thermos, electric furnace. That she's a jeweler, so it's this stuff. Will this thing will melt gold. So we said, why don't we melt steel? And so uh, we put the uh, the melting pot into the tank full of salt. It was kosher salt too. So we had the blessing of the rabbis. <laughs> And uh, we, we just turned it on, let it run, and uh, it actually it, it worked. It was uh, we melted that. I didn't get a picture of it in its liquid state, but as you can see, the cast iron was not it was not very happy. The uh, it, it, uh, this we have a pool. So you have a pool of. Uh, That's not a laser. Oh, it's not a laser. It's a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> It was hit it with sound waves. There, so at the bottom you have a pool of melted salt, and then all this strange corrosion, green uh, corrosion around the edge of the tank. So we figured well, that's probably uh, that's not a good sign. Uh, if in in in, in uh, 40 minutes, if we uh, got that kind of stuff, so we thought, well, let's try something else. So we got a here's a. Uh, clay uh, graphite uh, crucible that I got. Uh, and so I filled it up with, this is just table salt, Borton salt. And um, we put it back into the, uh, into the crucible, into the furnace. And so uh, we used, so here's the electric furnace. Uh, it heated up to 1450 degrees, took about 45 minutes. Um, now let's see, this thing has got a, uh, 
Yeah, let's see. Okay, wait. Uh -huh. I'm, the mystery of how to get this. Okay, I guess I should. So here's uh, Eric taking the, uh, uh, taking the crucible out of the furnace. It is hot, red hot. And then, uh, by George, uh, melted salt. So how many people have melted salt? I, I'm one of the few. And so, of course, just to demonstrate it really was melted, I had Eric dump it into a bucket of water. Really, don't try this at home. It was kind of like an explosive <laughs> reaction. <to it. laughs> but uh, we, we weren't uh, injured by it, and the salt is still liquid. And uh, so probably the way to do this, if you were going to try it, would be to see if you could form, use the cast iron to hold the shape of the vessel, and then line it with uh, this, a graphite material. Because it is a clay, and if you kept if the, if the thermal expansion worked, where it didn't you know delaminate, it might it might work for you. And then you're going to heat that thing to 800 degrees and keep it there, and then um, it'll just be running on it. Uh, and all you'll be doing is turning on and off that pump and turning on and off the heater. If um, if it's possible to do, uh, we could use standard cast iron uh, for the storage vessel. Uh, line it with uh, the graphite clay mixture, uh, seal it, uh, keep oxygen and water out of it, and if you could do it, you could purchase uh, the power for $50 a megawatt hour and sell it for $250 a megawatt hour. Uh, each one of those units would yield gross uh, $300,000 a year, <clears throat> but I'm not quite sure how much it would cost to build one, but uh, probably you could afford to spend a couple million dollars on one of them, so it would be economically sense. So we'll be taking uh, uh, in investor information we can, uh, afterwards, I'll be taking out uh, orders for uh, shares. So, <laughs> so thanks everybody. Any questions? Could you just make your reaction vessel out of thorium? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just send me a give me a truckload of thorium. <laughs> you could make it out of a, a tungsten too. Are you familiar with the down set? I believe that's the standard method of making yeah. sodium metal We're using uh, a yeah. crucible. No, no, but, um, how does that apply? Well, it's, it's basically a roughly 100 year old uh, technology that shows how to deal with molten salt at these temperatures. And as an added bonus, you also get the ability to do electrolysis so you can make sodium metal. And if you're wondering what the benefit of that is, uh, new car batteries instead of lithium will be probably sodium based. So there's going to be a demand for sodium. So the two dovetail very nicely. We'll put that on our list of things after we get the electrical part going. Hi there, Dr. Stephen Boyd. Uh, yeah. As a guy who's melted lots of different types of salts, uh, just just a recommendation. You made iron two chloride, so, okay. so I would I would advise against that. <laughs> if you if you want some help, I'd be happy to help because I've used furnaces and crucibles on a wide variety of salt. <laughs> so just to so like that's what that was. E e yes, yes. <laughs> Tell me it's not explosive, is it? It is not explosive. Oh, thank you. Like, highly yeah. toxic. I was going to say, I've melted quite a several hundred pounds of salt in my time, and you'll be surprised, even like lab grade 99.99% .99 salt is just full of shit, yeah. and, they're, and they're full of shit. That's why you need to get, make sure it's kosher. Yeah, so the, even the kosher stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> we, we melted a, we did a similar thing to you, and we melted about 20 pounds of kosher salt, and because uh, we were doing a stress test, uh -huh. and uh, the same thing, it was just, uh, it was like Satan's butt, you know, coming out of there. Yeah, it was like an, ex I, I'll show a video of it sometime. Any more questions? But what, what do you guys think of the concept, the high temperature thermal uh, storage system, whatever? Yeah, well, Bill Gates likes it. Yeah, well, if it's Bill likes it, I like it. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, Bill.